How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now memory is such an important component in our systems, but we rarely take the time to actually look further than the surface. By that I mean we usually just take a look at the memory base frequencies and how it runs, how it looks and if the RGB just works with the rest of our system's components. But what about the deeper aspect to it? Who manufactured it and what type of a RAM it actually is? Now we haven't done a lot of memory on the channel here really, but today we're going to take a look at the ADATA XPG Spectrix D50 modules and what they have to offer offer above and below the surface. But first, these sleek chips do come in either white or a gunmetal gray modules and are currently retailing for around $95 for the two 8 gig 3600 megahertz kit like we have here. The D50 has a very minimalistic design to it with some nice indent lines and five addressable RGB LEDs at the top that does also feature a very nice diffused look to them. They're also not very tall, so most air coolers will easily fit and they won't give you any clearance issues. Regarding the RGB, they do work with a SUSE or a SYNC, Gigabytes RGB Fusion, MSI's a Mystic Lighting Sync, and then also ASRock's a Polychrome RGB LED software. So it doesn't really matter which motherboard you have, all of them will be able to control your RGB and get some a nice instant a lighting effects going on. So for the RGB, you do have a multiple options for effects on the RAM. You do get the standard static, you get a pulse, a flash, a color cycle, the default rainbow effect, and then also you can turn them off if you wanted to. But what's also nice is because they're addressable RGB, you do have the ability to program each LED individually to get your custom look that you want for your system. Now we did notice that because of the diffuser at the top, it does have a bit more of a pastel look to it. So it's going to depend on your system if you like it or not, uh, but it does still look nice and clean. Now for all of our testings, we paired it up with an Aorus Z490 Master Motherboard and again, their RGB Fusion software. Now the dedicated software from XPG to actually control the memory, uh, we tried it, but it didn't want to work. So we couldn't really show that it just kept asking us to restart our system and it just didn't want to work at all so unfortunately we couldn't show how those looked but before we get into how these modules actually perform we won't be overclocking them at all as most of the average consumers don't really know how because it can get quite complicated we're also kind of new to overclocking memory so uh, we're still kind of learning most of it as we go. Now also uh, most people just kind of plug in and play with the memory. They buy the fastest memory and they use it like that. But at least just keep in mind to use the XMP um, overclock in, in, in your motherboard's BIOS. Uh, otherwise your 3600 megahertz memory will only run at 2133 megahertz, which honestly will be a bummer. Now, XPG does also offer quite a wide range of a different uh, size and also frequency see so you do have your pick there uh, depending on your system and what your wallet will allow now like we mentioned before the kit we have here is the dual 8 gig 3600 megahertz modules with uh, timings of 18 at 20 at 20 and 40 at 2 running at 1.35 volts now these are also samsung b die memory chips which just means that it's uh, some of the best uh, dies that you can get for your memory but now let's quickly get into the benchmarks and how they actually performed. Now here we can see that they do perform very well against the Corsair Vengeance LED memory that we compare it to, but also keep in mind that it is also because there are 3,600 megahertz on the XPG, whereas the Corsairs were only 3,000 megahertz with timings, however, of 15, 17, 17, and 35. In IDA, we saw that the higher frequency range 
showed a better latency times and a higher bandwidth. In the Cinebench benchmarks, the single core scores were pretty much the same, but it seems like uh, timings do play a bigger role in uh, the uh, multi-core scores, as the Corsairs uh, did score a bit better there. So then in conclusion, these uh, puppies do look good, perform well, and are also friendly towards your pocket. Uh, they do actually do uh, quite a decent uh, job. Now we looked under uh, the surface and it was good. We looked at uh, the surface as well and it was uh, very good. So then all in all, there's nothing really to complain about with uh, the uh, the 50 uh, we are extremely happy about the performance and also the aesthetics. So we would definitely recommend these for anybody looking for some new memory that does also want that RGB and also performance, of course. Now, the only thing that might be a drawback, depending on person to person, is of course just that pastel colors. Uh, it might not work for everybody. For instance, here, some of us didn't like it, but some of us did again. So it's just going to depend up to what you personally like. But yeah, they do still look very nice, especially the white. I do like the white. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys want to get these for yourself, definitely check out the links in the video description. A big thanks to ADA Data for sending these over for review. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this review, please like, share, comment, comment like always, and I'll check all of you next time. Cheers, guys.